Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this is the new Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play. Now the Altitude Power Play is Rocky Mountain's long travel electric mountain bike. It's rolling on 29 inch wheels and it's got 170 millimeter travel fork and 160 mil of rear wheel travel. New for this year is an updated Dynami 4.0 motor, which is claimed to be lighter and smaller than its predecessor, but still possesses a gut churning 108 Newton meters of peak torque. There's also a bigger 720 watt hour internal battery, which is now easily removable with just a four millimeter hex key. We've also got a new slimline controller and the new Jumbotron display, which is neatly integrated into the frame's top tube. The frame itself is also all new and it's based around a mid-high pivot suspension design. The lower shock mount uses a bearing mount for improved sensitivity and it also houses the Ride 4 geometry chip. As you can probably guess, this gives you four geometry positions, allowing you to tweak the bottom bracket height by up to 10 millimeters and adjust the head and seat angle by 0.8 of a degree. The bike will come from the factory in position three, which is known as the neutral position. And this provides a 64 degree head angle, a 76 degree seat tube angle, and a 455 millimeter reach in the medium size that I've been testing here. There's also a two position dropout flip chip. Now the bike will come in the short position, which gives you a 437 millimeter rear center length, which is very short for a long travel 29er with a motor. Personally, I found the short setting to be a little bit unusual wieldy, especially on steep climbs where the front wheel had a habit of lifting and wandering all over the place. I preferred the bike setup in the long position which gives a 447 millimeter rear center length. Now that's still pretty short for an e-mountain bike but it did provide better stability and more even weight distribution. There are five models in the Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play lineup for 2022. On top of that, Rocky Mountain also offers the Shorter Travel Instinct Power Play which uses the same frame as this albeit with a smaller shock and a shorter travel fork. You can see all the prices, specs, and details on the Instinct and Altitude Power Play models in our first look story. We've put a link in the video description below, which will take you there. The bike we've been testing here is the Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play C70, and it sits one step from the top of the range with a retail price of 13,499 Australian dollars. It's equipped with Performance Series Fox suspension with a 38 fork and a Float X2 shock. There's a Shimano XT drivetrain with four piston brakes. There's a DT Swiss 370 rear hub, alloy WTB rims, and unusually for a stock bike, Cushcore inserts front and rear. Those are wrapped with Maxxis double down tires. There's a Minion DHR2 on the back, and an Asagai up front with the sticky 3C Max Grip compound. Confirmed weight for our medium sized test bike weighed without pedals is 24.12 kilos, which is on the heavier side even for a long travel e-mountain bike. Now I'll keep this video fairly brief as there's already a load of information in the full review that details suspension setup and fit, as well as comparisons with some of the other e-mountain bikes we've been testing lately. If you wanna know everything about how this bike rides, then make sure you click that link in the video description below to check out the full review. As for what's impressed me most about the Altitude Powerplay, well, I have to say that the geometry is spot on, and as a result, the handling is fantastic. Once the dropout was set in the long position, which I think is a better match for a burly long travel e-mountain bike like this, the Altitude Power Play delivers really well-balanced weight distribution. Of course, it's a confidence-inspiring bike on the descents, but its cornering performance is nothing short of exceptional. It tips in easily, and despite its substantial mass, it's remarkably adept at flip-flopping between successive turns. The suspension generates a load of grip, and that's supported by the excellent tire spec, with the soft compound Asagai up front being especially confidence-inspiring. And thanks to the tough tire casings and the cush core inserts, it's possible to run quite low pressures on this bike with less chance of burping and pinch flatting. The Dynami motor also impresses with huge torque, sensitivity, and progressive power delivery. It surprised me with how intuitive and controllable it felt on the trail, and even in the highest assist mode, it never seems to run away from you, even when you're soft pedaling around tight uphill switchbacks. So we're about to attempt the not very possible climb. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have ridden this before, I've never cleared it with a motor or without. Probably not going to make it, but let's give it a go. Coming up. Oh. 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 
Ah, nuts! That was pretty close. I'm gonna try it again. Oh, come on, baby! Come on! Woohoo! Yes! It's reasonably quiet and it's much less whiny than a Shimano EP8 motor or the SL1.1 motor that comes in the Kinevo SL. It also doesn't exhibit any of the clacking noises that you'll find in the latest Shimano or Bosch units. And combined with the tightly managed chain and generous frame armoring, this is an impressively quiet bike on the descents. There is some mechanical noise that comes from the idler and the lower chain guide though. And as I've found with other high pivot bikes like the Cannondale Jekyll and the GT Force, Keeping the chain clean and well lubricated is necessary to minimize that noise. Otherwise, fuel efficiency has been quite impressive. I conducted several range test experiments on the altitude power play, and you can see the results of those tests, along with how it stacks up against the competition in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. As for the downsides, well, the Dynamine motor doesn't have a heap of overrun, and this is something you might notice on really steep, super awkward technical climbs with lots of big rock slabs and roots to hop over. Also, compared to the latest Bosch and Shimano motors, it does require a little bit more input from your legs in order to access maximum power. It is possible to turn up the boost level on the Jumbotron display, it's quite an interesting sentence, and that will increase acceleration and make it easier to access more power. The buttons on the controller are too light and vague and sometimes I would accidentally change the assist level without meaning to. That isn't helped by the fact that there is no audible beep when you change assistance mode, but to be honest, I kind of prefer it like that anyway. I do wish the Jumbotron display had a clock on it, but otherwise it is very neat and it does provide you with the basic information whilst also being totally unobtrusive while riding. My only other concern with this bike is that while I got along with the geometry and the handling really well, Taller riders may wish for a slightly longer rear center and perhaps a steeper seat tube angle, especially when you compare it to something like the Norco Sight VLT, which has a 455 millimeter rear center and a 78 degree seat tube angle in the extra large frame size. There are of course downsides to making a bike too long and too steep. And I will point out that the eight way adjustable geometry does provide a pretty wide range of tuning options. And I'll wrap up there with our verdict on the Rocky Mountain Altitude Power Play. I expected this bike to be heavy, excessively powerful and glued to the ground. And in some ways that's true but in other ways it totally surprised me. While the Dynami 4.0 motor packs a ridiculous amount of power with near instantaneous response, the progressive delivery makes it highly controllable. The excellent tyre spec and mid-high suspension design generates masses of grip, allowing the altitude power play to claw up rough and loose technical climbs with stability and quickness. The geometry and handling are also brilliant. It delivers a comfortable riding position and exceptional weight distribution, making the altitude power play both agile and predictable across a wide range of conditions. It inspires a load of confidence on technical descents, with the suspension gobbling up rocks and big hits with ease. Despite its ability to mob through straight line chunder, it rips turns with surprising nimbleness that had me constantly grinning from ear to ear. It's not the poppiest bike given its mass and its high traction suspension design, though riders concerned with weight may want to look at the shorter travel instinct power play. Personally, I'm not sure I'd want to give up the extra travel though, especially when the altitude power play handles as well as it does. Indeed, this is a bloody good e-mountain bike. Now, as mentioned before, there is a load more information on this bike, including the results of our range test experiments in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click that link in the video description below, and that will take you through to the review of this bike right here. If you've got any questions for me, drop those into the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews coming in the near future. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Tooroo!